Both are experienced players, been around a long time. Tom's won everything there is to win, and Jez is a very, very accomplished player. Oh, pretty good break that from Jez, and I think, uh, yeah, I, I feel you there, Jez. That was uh, that's a bit of a tough one to go dry. Look like he caught these really sweet. Control the cue ball well, a couple of rattlers, but, but no friends. And the one thing you do need if you are going to beat Tom Cousins is you do have to find your break because you're not going to get many chances off two C's. You certainly do. Straight away, Tom's going to try and develop that red, which he has. Ooh, just double kiss the red in. Yeah, that'll do. Delicate little shot there, but yeah. just about got there. Yeah, and it'd be wise to pop the, the red over the left-hand centre pocket and screw back for the one in the top right-hand corner. Nice shot there. And the reason I say that is it gives him a great opportunity now just to drop this ball in the corner. He's on the other red in the top, it'll go off the yellow, I believe. Then you drop the red in the middle, which gives you perfect position on the red next to the eight ball. Red in the corner and eight ball in the opposite centre. May go twice across here. Yeah, decided to play for the other pocket and that's absolutely perfect. Yeah, it did look a little... I mean, you referenced it there with if it goes off the yellow. It did look tight to the top left, so nice that he had plenty of angle to play the short position. And you will have realised that probably two shots previous to that, that yeah. it may be a little bit tight. So he, he obviously left that angle on the red to come across. He's just got, just got to drop this in dead weight, just slide past the yellow. Doesn't want to go too far. That's perfect. Well, he's starting off where he left off. <laughs> yeah, we've seen this plenty of times before, haven't we? Yeah, I just noticed there when the cue ball hit that bottom cushion, it just died then. That could be because the cloth's very new. Yeah, it, it is pretty much brand new, I think, for for this event. I like even in commentary mode, you're instantly on your own personal analysis, trying to figure some stuff out for later. Yeah, because you can see a lot of shots from the commentary box and... You know, how the ball's reacting with screw back, with side spin, top spin, and how it plays off the cushions, because on, on new cloth, new cushions, uh, the cue ball slides a lot. Obviously, he gets asked a, a fair amount about, you know, what does the, the number one mean to him and all the rest of it. Does he feel coming into this year that the number one sort of puts maybe a little bit of added pressure and all the rest of it as he gets kicked in off there? And, I mean, you can sort of tell with the way that he strolls around the table. I just don't think he feels pressure at times. And he's coming into this year the same as he was last year, the same as he was the year before. Just try and win an event. And it, if you can just put yourself under that little pressure comparatively, yeah, it's dream, isn't it? It is, and you know, you saw it there with his break. I did say he loses a cue ball sometimes on the break, and that's exactly what happened there. Mm. It's unfortunate to be kicked in off, but if you're not controlling that cue ball, then that can happen. They've not come out great here for uh, Jez. I think he has to take yellows and just wants to pot this and leave a nice angle for the yellow in the middle. Yeah, yellows aren't too bad, are they? The red at the bottom right is what's stopping anyone taking reds, I, I don't think. Yeah, and what a flick he's had there. He got a lucky flick off that red. Just wants to leave the cue ball basically about six inches above the middle yellow. That in turn, he can pot the yellow. He's short there. He wanted a little angle basically pop the yellow and nudge the other yellow towards the side cushion and he's guaranteed to be on the yellow next to the eight ball he's landed a little short there he may have to play the yellow in the center roll through and play the other yellow that's next to the red in the right middle well i can't agree with that i cannot agree with that shot yeah that's a strange choice yeah, I don't think he noticed the shot, to be honest. I mean, he may, he may still get out. I mean, this is a tough shot, and he wants to leave the cue ball right on the cushion here on his bad yellow. This is tough. Yeah, and he's missed it by a long, long way. Not the end of the world, but Tom will be looking to play that red onto the yellow, get the cue ball up the table, and leave Jez no shot. Yeah, that that route never really looked on. That looked like he was making a tough job even tougher. Yeah, and all that came were 
because of the, the positional shot where he left the wrong angle. But like I said, he could have rolled that yellow through, get the cue ball low and drop the yellow in the middle. It would yeah. have been perfect, but I just don't think he saw the shot. Yeah, I mean, he was dead straight, so he could absolutely do that. DC looks like he's about to go here, but oh, we'll find out. No, I don't think he's going to go here. I'll be very, very surprised. I think he's if just setting up a safety here. Yeah, but I mean, if he was playing the safety there, why not just roll the red that he's just cannoned over the pocket and leave him stuck behind the other red? Yeah, I think, I think you've got to play this, get the cue ball somewhere near the red where the eight ball is and drop him in and leave the cue ball bang on the side cushion. That way you're snookering him on the yellows. Well, two options. You either screw up the table or you drop him in in, in behind the eight ball. Which one's it going to be? There you go. Nicely oh, played there by right, Tom. Yeah, controlled that really beautifully. Yeah, if this is me... I think it's, it's one of them where you just... I think that's what we're all wondering, Chris, is what you do in this situation. <laughs> well, for me, you've just got to whack this. You've got to whack this and hope because there's nothing else you can do. There's no point playing it slow because you might not hit a cushion. Well, you certainly got to hit the yellow. It's part of the eight ball. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Well, there's benefits to giving it a whack sometimes, and then there are negatives. And this, for Chess Graham, is a big old negative. Well, he's obviously played that with a lot of left-hand side because the way it's come back off the cushion. And if he doesn't make one, they'll probably come out great. <laughs> it's just how the game goes. Sometimes. Yeah, that's poor maths for you, isn't it? There you go. Perfect break. Doesn't make one. And how do you like him? Oh, my. Perfect break there. Cue ball straight up the middle of the table. Can't break much better than that. Just look what happens. No ball on the break. Well, you know from experience, it, it is it is amazing how often it feels like it happens when you make a mistake as big as Jess has just done there where he's potted the eight ball and lost a frame. Even in the back of his head, he wouldn't be human if he's not thinking there's no way I'm making a ball there. Yeah, and I if this is me, I'm thinking straight away I've got to get rid of the red near the eight ball. That's That's... The worst ball on the table, even though he has got the red on the side cushion. If he gets that one, then the red in the centre, everything's in the open. He's played for it straight away. That's perfect. He's going to play for the red in the centre after this. Take the three balls at the top of the table, and the red down the cushion lasts for me. Unless he can get on it very easily after the one after the middle. Yeah, I think it just depends on what angle he leaves to the one in the centre, doesn't it? Well, they'd love to be straight, to be honest. And just follow through and, and take it take it out the way early. I think he's slightly short, and mm. again, on this new cloth, new equipment, the cue ball doesn't follow through as good as it should do, because it's so responsive. So, like, where you expect it to go, it's probably another three, three to four inches wide. So when you play a screw back, it absolutely flies back. But when you play with topspin, nothing happens. It's as if you're getting a kick. Yeah. Got to be a little bit careful here, does Tom? See, there he's cannon the red, and I think he was trying to... I mean, he might have been trying to cannon the red up towards the top right-hand corner of the pocket, but... I think he's looking for half ball to land in behind the red on the cushion. Yeah, because if that lands slightly short or slightly too far, he might be in a bit of trouble. It's all about the red down the cushion. Perfect. Absolutely perfect is that. He can get on the red down the cushion after this. Doesn't want to leave himself bridging over the yellow. So just leave it slightly short of the yellows. Probably a couple of inches from where the red is now, what he's playing. Just roll it through. That in turn leaves you the perfect angle. Nice angle there. Just going to drop the red in. Pocket weight. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the cue ball. Yeah, 
and you won't be seeing Tom do anything special here, but just dropping this red in. Kill the cue ball and take a long eight. Yeah, I think a good example there, Chris, of of TC at work in that, you know, I think you can get quite falsely labelled as a bit of a break merchant. So 2-0 lead for Tom Cousins, and even in the early going here, Chess Graham would love to get himself a start in this match. Tom Cousins did not control that break particularly well. Yeah, and again, that, that was a real poor break there from Tom. And again, they've not come out brilliant. They're not exactly bad, but there's a ball tied up if it goes for reds. Yeah, you'd love it to be easier if you just great, wouldn't you? You can sympathise. Yeah, it's just just not going for Jez at the moment. I think he has to go reds. All depends if you can play the eight ball off the red in the centre pocket. That'll make the finish a lot easier. So yellow's the choice. And obviously now the eight ball becomes a pretty big problem. There's your overhead. It looks pretty good to going off the red, to be honest with you. Yeah, so that shouldn't really cause him a problem. Would really love to get rid of the two yellows, what he's playing now, the one and then the one up the cushion. Get rid of them quickly. That nice shot there from Jez. He needs to be a little bit careful. This is all about the cue ball control and he needs to get it on a string. <laughs> yeah, and that's a poor shot. You can, you can over it that shot by some distance and you'd still be okay. And he's under it that shot and that is the only way it could go wrong. He has got a recovery. Is he playing the plant or is he playing it off the cushion, off the red? Need to hit it with pace, otherwise it doesn't go in. Well, looks wild, but that was the sort of pace. Was it the sort of pace he needed to play out? Was that a little bit extreme? Yeah, that was a little bit too hard, to be honest. And you've got to say, this is looking like it's 3 0. And he's had a couple of chances as Jez. Not been easy, but he's just played the odd slack positional shot. And it's got him in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, and it's it's very forgivable that, you know, on a on a brand new surface as it were with the table and the cloth and all the rest of it. Uh, a few questions popping in over social media I've seen over the course of the, the day so far. We're not on the new Rasson table. Not yet at least. Still in production, but we'll be with us very, very soon. So the table itself isn't brand new, but the cloth very much is from our friends at Strachan. first game of the, of the tournament it's always difficult to find your feet especially when you find yourself 3-0 down to the ultimate pool number one yeah Tom's got to be a little bit careful you know because if that red next to the eight ball doesn't go clean he's gonna have to play a cannon and when he cannons the eight ball he doesn't want the eight ball to go next to the yellow so he needs to be a little bit careful if it goes clean then it isn't a problem yeah well it will definitely go clean to the top left but yet middle looks tight doesn't it well for me you've got to play the cannon but play it with it quite a little bit of pace reason being if you hit the eight ball and the eight ball hits the yellow it can either pot the yellow or open the pocket for the eight ball yeah yeah it the closer you get the eight ball to the bottom cushion the better here really yeah but the harder it's hit the more the cue ball's going to hurt it's going to arc around the eight if that makes sense yep it's got to be a little bit careful here he's uh not quite sure he's, he's in perfect position. We oh, had a good lineup of this shot, that's the key for him. Well, I said that'd happen. Yeah. Did look to play that pretty slowly, didn't he? That's why you have to play that shot with a bit of pace. Yeah. You know, if, you might still not get on it. You might not get on the eight ball, but give yourself the chance. Oh, is there a, is there a way to bump it out? 
again, or can he leave some kind of double or treble? Well, I'll tell you the shot, but it's very difficult. He's got to cut the red in the middle, come across, right in between all three yellows in the centre of the table, pot the red in the middle, go up and down and cannon the eight ball out. And again, he can't hit this hard because it's going to arc wide. So this is all about pace and control. Medium pace, off the top cushion with a touch of right hand side, cannon the eight half ball. There you see how wide that threw. And he didn't really hit that hard. No. It's just thrown like crazy and he's been very, very fortunate here, you know. Yeah, he's got some kind of shot. Yeah, he could have easily snooked himself, he could have gone in off in the middle there. You know, and he's to be honest with you, he's actually got it looks like a pretty okay treble. A treble. Can if zigzag it, around those yellows. If this is me, I'm 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 doubling it in the bottom left hand corner from where he's shooting and send the white to the top right hand cushion. No, it's gone wide. Wasn't far away. But some cousins runs aground and maybe an opening for Jess Graham. Goodness me, did he need it? Yeah, but if he doubles the eight ball back to the corner where he's shooting from, you send the white off the side cushion, top cushion, back to the side cushion, it doesn't leave a shot. And the eight ball's on the pocket. What's he going to do? Oof, that only just dropped. <laughs> yeah, it did. He pushed that one in with the shoulder, did Jez there? But very important time in the match is this one. He's got a lovely cue action as Jez hits the ball nice. I just think sometimes he, he lacks a little bit of belief in himself because he is a, a quality player. Well, he's, he's almost a confidence player, isn't he? When he's flying, he's absolutely unbelievable to watch because he gets everything and anything. I don't know when he won his, his Challenger Grand Slam a couple of years ago in the most ridiculous fashion. Just needs to get himself going sometimes, and well, this will help. Good break there. Yeah, it was. And he's made a ball. I don't think the leave is particularly nice, but I think. Oh, we got half a look at them. I think first instinct was yellows looked okay. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad, to be fair. Yellows are lovely. Can he put the right one of the two at the bottom of the, the table? Swing the cue ball around. Nicely played. Yeah, and if you can pot this one in the top right hand corner, leave an angle half ball on the yellow that's over the top left hand corner pocket and screw down the table past the red. That's what I'd love to play. That's perfect. Screw down the table. Whatever you do, don't under hit this shot because you don't want to hit the red. But as long as you can get close to the yellow that's near the eight ball, below it, you're in perfect position. Decided against it. Yeah, played a similar shot, but very much was. I mean, it looked like he was trying to hold it more than anything. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. But he's at the table and it's his choice. Maybe the yellow goes past both reds in the corner pocket. If it does, then it's, it's the right shot. Couldn't quite see from the camera angle we were looking at. Yeah, well, that tells us. Yeah, well, that was the correct shot without a doubt. needle stuff but that's pretty perfect. Picked a good little route here is Jez. Yeah does he does he stun it dead or screw back to the cushion? I think I'm screwing back to the cushion. Oh that's a poor oh. shot. Jez why are you hitting the red? Jez there's no reason to hit the red. If 
you think you're going to be close, you just drop the ball in. It's still quite simple, but he's forgetting the slide here. He might hit this thick. Yeah, and he did. And, you know, the, the, these frames are going to come back to haunt him because he's had three chances now in the first five frames. And, I mean, that one was just a glorious chance there. Well, especially as he'd done all the hard work. He picked a lovely route, went through it really nicely. And, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. He, he he might have felt like he couldn't avoid the red. But if that's the case, surely you just play the simple shot and just Change kill it in. Just drop the ball in. Drop the ball in. Drop the other ball in and play the eight ball in the middle. You know, it, it, it wasn't difficult, but, you know, he's at the table and he sees it how he sees it, but... That was uh, that wasn't for me. That shot. Well, does the red pass the yellow, or is Tom going to play the deliberate foul, run through and snooker him? If I say a deliberate foul, it's actually a loss of turn shot. Yeah, your phone will be lighting up in a second if you're not careful. No, he did look to sneak it in. I knew it was tight, and I tell you what, this isn't a tough shot. Pop both balls in one shot, play it with screw back, and don't hit it hard. Yeah, this red's hanging in the pocket. It's it feels very gettable. As long as he hits the yellow in the centre of the pocket, it's an absolute certainty. Just make sure you screw the ball. It looks like he's stunning it there. That's a shot. Good shot there by Jez, but he's been left let off the hook by Tom Cousins, and you don't see that very often. No, but when it does happen, you have to take advantage of it, and Jez Graham has done that. He's got away with one there. Yeah, I know Callum didn't didn't play a huge amount last year, and, and sort of had a bit of a tougher time after starting the season really well. So he's got to be he's got to be feeling pretty sick at that draw. And speaking of feeling pretty sick, this is a. It's a really interesting layout. But it's a poor break again. You see his yeah. cue ball goes side cushion, top cushion, side cushion. And I tell you what, if he, if he can put a red and go a reds, I think I think Jesse's favourite straight from the off. Well, it's just difficult to lose if you're reds in this frame. You might not win it at first visit, but that yellow is, is horrendous. Yeah, it, for, for, for me, you put the red, push the white to the bottom cushion, and then play the double and just get it over the pocket. And then try and make something happen. Because he can pot his yellows at the top end of the table. Tom can't clear up. Yeah. Well, if you can, it's a miracle. But well, that's the thing. I mean, Echez is now huge, huge favourite in this frame. I think he has to move the red that's close to the eight ball now. I think he will. But after he's done that, you know, how on earth does Tom Cousins win this frame? I wouldn't be screwing it, because if he hits this too hard, he might pot the eight ball. He's okay. He's, for me, he's still favourite. Because Tom can't get both them reds out, uh, yellows out, sorry, in one shot. He's got to be so delicate with the one next to the eight ball. Well, it's, it, it, it's so difficult for him. Can, can he pot? Can he pot a yellow in the top, screw the white to the bottom cushion? then double the yellow out that's near the end and not the other yellow right in the same shot just to give himself the opportunity or does he now just push this red over the eight ball uh, yellow over the eight ball and try and cause a re-rack I'll tell you what you don't see that very often oh, that looks a pretty good shot he's close well it is a good shot but I'll tell you what I'm doing now I'm trying to put all these yellows play the red onto the yellow at the top end of the table just try and put all these balls can he pot two in one? Not the best shot, but he's okay. Well, we don't get many of these frames in this rule set, but because usually balls over bags don't really equate to much. But when it's the eight ball, it's a whole different matter. And it does happen now and again, we do see it at snooker where the eight ball or the black ball goes over the corner and all the reds surround it because they're playing a lot of safety shots. But, you know, if I'm Jesse and I'm quite happy. Oh, you're delighted, I think. Well, he's pointed that. Or has he? Well, that's not a good shot. That is not a good shot. Well, Jesse's going to take it straight off the table. 
that's exactly what he's going to do. But he doesn't want to leave his other red over the pocket because then he'll pot the yellow onto the red. It's all about thinking in front. A little bit of chess going off here. Oh, he's put them both. <laughs> oh. I mean, that's an extraordinary combination shot to make that. <laughs> yeah, and now you clip <laughs> off the red and pot the yellow over the corner. Bit of chess going now. Nice shot there. I think we'll see Tom just roll the yellow down towards the other two yellows. Near the eight ball. This is quite interesting now because you don't see this very often. And as good as these players are, how good are they at tactics? Yeah, I mean, this is such a specific scenario. And Jez is going to have to be a little bit careful here because eventually... Eventually, Tom is going to have to bring them yellows away, but Jez doesn't want to get a red down there. He also doesn't want to put any more reds. Yeah, he, for Jez, it's all about keeping his reds on the table and keeping that supremacy. Just wonder if he's almost... It's almost worth him... Yeah, I was just going to suggest... I don't know if he's played that, but... I was going to suggest moving a red into the middle of the table and just get those balls close to each other and try and force something. I think Tom may play the yellow on the side, Cush come across and try and pot the red over the left-hand corner, maybe. Maybe he's not seen the shot. Well, you really don't get these sorts of frames very often, but I find them absolutely fascinating to watch. They are fascinating because you don't see them that often. You know, you can see there he's, he's tried to pot his red and... Well... Now then, Jez, what do you do now, <laughs> even though you don't want to pot a ball? Well, it, it, how rarely does this happen? Both players are, and have no intention of potting their own colour set here. Well, the, go the goal is just to pot the other ones. Yeah, and, and for me, pot the red over the top here, then play the red onto the yellow onto the red. Or do you, you think do he's you got to sacrifice a red? Yeah, do you, do you just play the snooker? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong. Well, you don't want that over the pocket. <laughs> I think Tom's going to try and pot his red over the pocket here with the yellow. And then you're going to see Jez play a red up and down onto that yellow. Who's got the most balls on the table here? Well, well Tom technically, but two of them are over the eight ball. Yeah. Open table balls that can be played with, Jez has the advantage. But yeah, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot going on. There is. I, think I can hear your mind whirring from here. I like this though. Oh, well, I know you do. Oh, well, That's a sloppy one. Does he take a risk and flick off the red and knock his yellow over towards the eight ball? I was just thinking that. That feels brave, but I don't think you can blame Jess for not playing that. Well, he needs to move the red away, and he's not. I can't agree with that. He's just giving him the shot now to play the yellow onto the red, get the pocket. And I know, obviously, Jez is going to try and get the pocket back. Well, I suppose as Jez has the ball advan the ball's advantage in that sense, he'll always b end up on top. That's the key with the tactics, though. Play the pot onto your opponent's ball, but don't leave yours or the pocket. Because obviously that makes it much easier. Is Tom going to double this yellow up and down and get it near the top? Then he can play the another yellow onto the red. That's what he should do. Just get one of them yellows up and down. Well, decided against it. Yeah, it goes the exact opposite way. Remember, all your usual rules are still in play here. You must ha hit a cushion after contact. Yeah, and the clock's in uh, Tom's favour, to be fair. But how important is it now that it's 3-2 and not, not a few frame lead for Tom Cousins? Because this frame is going to take a while to figure out and... Whoever wins it, it's only going to be a maximum of a two-frame differential. Well, we might even not see this frame finish, believe it or not. I mean, that would be incredible. Uh, that's a poor shot, Tom. Get the yellow up the table. You can then play the yellow in the onto the red and pot his red. He doesn't want to leave this over the pocket either. Clever shot. Tom's going to double the yellow onto the red here, I believe. Well, t 
turned it down. Softly, softly. Looks at it. Try and sneak in behind the yellow for the snooker. Didn't get it. Chair's just happy to contain for the time being. But the th I, think th I, I think you're about to say exactly what I, what I was about to here. In the the, pl the beautiful part about this rule set is you always need to be moving forward. However, incrementally, slowly, you always need to be trying to progress. And at the moment, both of them just seem quite happy to just sort of tap back and forward. But no one's ever going to win the frame like that. Well, how Tom isn't playing the yellow onto the red up the top end of the table, I do not know. I know what he's trying to do. He's obviously trying to get the balls away, but... You know, Jez isn't giving himself an opportunity here. Well, that isn't what he wants to do. I think Jess just had enough. Yep, he's going for the re-rack. Tom will be delighted with this. Be absolutely delighted. Well, there was no way for Tom Cousins to win that frame. So re-rack it is, after I'm all of that. I'm a little bit surprised the referee's put a ball there to see if it goes past, because it obviously <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> Well, I'd be cut breaking if I, if I was breaking like he has been doing because he, he isn't hitting it how he wants to do. Do not adjust your sets. Tom Cousins, one of the best breaks in the world, is cut breaking. Yeah, and they, they haven't come out that bad, to be fair. The ball went straight in the middle of the pocket there. You see it fly straight in the corner, the yellow. Ban the cut break. Tell you what, these aren't the, this difficult. Cut the red in. Eight ball into the red. Nicely played. He wants to leave the cue ball somewhere near on the line where he is now, about two feet down, so they can pot the red in the bottom of the table. Bang in the centre in the bottom of the table. Pot that in the left hand corner. Develop the yellow. Opens the red up and it's game over. That's what he's played for. He's gone too far. He can still play it, but now he's got to actually play it with a bit of pace to create the angle where before, if he'd have left the natural angle, he couldn't fail to hit the yellow. In playing this, you don't want to hit the red. If you hit the red, you can snook yourself. Yeah, well, almost certainly. This is a big shot. Perfect. Oh, he's checked that up so well. Really difficult to judge that, as we've been saying all, all match long, really, to judge the spin off the cushions, in particular when you're checking the ball up is is really difficult, and he's judged it beautifully. Yeah, and he's still got a little bit of work to do here because there's no natural angles, really, to get on the, the, the red that's to the left of where the cue ball is. Extension for it called. I'm just wondering if you can pot the red in the corner and just play with a touch of top right and get the cue ball out. Well, he's, he's, he's a little bit concerned, and that's why he's going up the table. Probably the right shot. Yeah, I don't mind that. Nicely played there by Tom. Just going to pot this screw in between the eight ball and the yellow, leave a nice half ball angle to leave a natural angle to get on the red in the centre pocket. Well. Ooh. Well. Ooh. I think he's just okay. He is just okay, but he isn't where he wanted to be. I mean, no. he should have been a roughly six inches over to the right-hand side there. Yeah, got the wrong line. You can just about manufacture the angle here. Yeah, you can see that. He's going to be perfect on the eight ball, though. We know from the way... Top cap plays, he's not going to try and get too clever with this. Well, he did. He played it with a bit of pace as well, that could yeah. have gone wrong. Good shot there. Yeah, a little bit more sort of aggressive than I thought he would. Played it well. 4 2. For me, though, you see with a cut break, when a ball goes directly into a pocket without hitting anything, 
that shouldn't happen. Yeah, it almost becomes like a nine ball break then, doesn't it? Yeah, and look at that break. He's at the, that is the best break of the match. <laughs> and look how they've come out. It is brutal, isn't it? It is absolutely brutal. He's hit them perfect, controlled the white perfect and hasn't made a ball. Well, these reds are absolute sitters. You'd put your mortgage on uh, Tom Cousins clearing these up. Nice little plant there and well he's got nothing to do. He's gonna play for the red that's below the yellow on the right hand side there you can see. And then if I were Tom I'd play for the red that's on the bottom left hand side of the table. So red in the middle, red next to the yellow on the right hand side, then red on the left hand side, come twice across. And, and you can't really miss. And they're absolutely Mary Ploppins. <laughs> Well, scenic route. Yeah, were you expecting to follow through there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's still okay, do you know? There's, you can't see him going wrong. But it can now go wrong because you give your yourself one less option by potting that red. Yeah, and if that red was still on the table, say, you'd bet it was his next ball after the bottom left. Seems strange to have gotten rid of it. Yeah, it, does he punch this out? Does he screw up the table? I think you screw up the table. You've got two reds to play for if you screw up the table. There you go, nicely. Perfect, and I'll just uh, pop the red in the top right hand corner, come off the top cushion and back down for the red in the middle. Or does he play the other one? Just personal preference. Yeah, they've come out nicely for him, and oh, he's going to go two away from the victory. Yeah, and there's only going to be roughly about 13 and a half minutes left of this match. It's not, it's not feels like a long way back, doesn't it, for Jez? It does, and it's not been a vintage performance from Tom. He's, you know, he has made a few mistakes, but they haven't been punished. And that's the difference in this match. Elsewhere in the last 64, as Tom continues to not break particularly well, Ryan Fleming is 4-2 up on Carl Boys, and Sean Sharkey is 4-2 up on Scott Gillespie. You are all caught up. And, well, I think there's a good chance at this stage, with the score as it is, that I'll be able to speak to Tom Cousins at the end of this match. And the first thing I'll be asking him is about the break, because I think I've ever seen him break as badly. Yeah, I mean, they're just not coming out, are they, to be fair? Jez needs to get a bit of a rush on here because he's no good him taking his time here because there's not that long left on the clock and he needs four of the frames at least. He is capable of sort of flicking the switch. He's one of those sort of players who when he gets in a rhythm, he can fly, th fly through and win two or three very, very quickly. He needs to find that. Yeah, without a doubt. And... You've got to, for me, you've got to pot the one in the middle now. You've got the perfect angle if you pot the one in the middle to cut the yellow in that's next to the red that's tied up. And then you, you're on your bad two yellows and then play for this one, then up the table for the yellow. I mean, this, is, this isn't this is the right way for me. This can go wrong. Where if you play the yellow in the middle, then the yellow at the bottom end of the table and come down for your other two, I don't see how it can go wrong. There you go. I mean, it's just real poor shot selection. For somebody of Jersey's calibre who was a brilliant, brilliant player, I can't forgive things like that. Because to me, that would blatantly obvious that you play the one in the middle. Good shot there. Nice shot there from Jez. The problem being, he hasn't done anything. So even if Tom hits a yellow, he can't pot. Uh, sorry, if Tom hits a red, he can't pot a yellow. Yeah, TC just has to not foul here, and the frame is really his to control. Yeah, it's impossible to not hit a red. 
Well, we thought that earlier and Jazz ended up missing the yellow and putting the eight ball. <laughs> Everything's possible. Oh, wow. Everything's possible. Oh, wow. I've seen it all. <laughs> I've seen it all. Everything is possible. <laughs> Tom Cousins, it, that's happened because he's hit it hard and jumped the cue ball off the table into the top of the cushion. I mean, that's extraordinary. I don't, I don't think he needed to hit it that hard, though. What, what a chance this is. Can you believe that? I mean, that's amazing. Just look where the eight ball's got as well. He, he kind of tied the eight ball up a little bit, but what an opportunity now for Jez. Needs to be a little bit careful. Oh, Jez, what have you done there? You've got to make sure you get the yellow away. Can he flick it over the pocket and leave him touching the yellow above it? I think that's all he's got. Don't think he's got any other option, to be honest. Nicely played there, Jez. Not too bad. But if you've left the top side of this red, you could have been in deep trouble. I think he has. from Jez there. Uh, Tom's going to clear up from here, there's no doubt about it. Once again, poor shot selection has cost Jez another frame. Yeah, and those they're sort of they're quite difficult to process, aren't they? 15 seconds shot clock in operation. It's, it's just hard to forgive somebody of his calibre not playing the shot he should be playing. Yeah, agreed. Because it's it's... He doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball. It's absolute natural to pot that ball in the middle, and pot the other ball in the corner, and you're on your other two yellows. And then the other two are quite simple as well, and the eight balls over the pocket. But to go the way it went, I actually said after the first shot he played, this can go wrong, just because he played that first shot the way he did. Yeah, and it was instant. Got to be a little bit careful here, does Tommy? Needs to come past where the cue ball is now because he wants to be to the right hand side of this red that's below. Oh, what a poor shot that is. Well, that's the shot clock catching him out. It's a transition to a 15 second shot clock there, and Tom Cousins was rushed and just potted it and, de and dealt with the problem later. And he's not got loads of time to deal with the problem now. He has got his extension though. Bit of a rush of blood to the head there from Tom. If he was rushed, just call your extension. He's lucky if he can swerve this and pot it. I know that much. Oh, he's, he's blessed there, you know. <laughs> that is such a poor shot what he's played and he's got away with murder there. Yeah. Even though he's played a decent shot there. The one before was terrible. Oh, it was awful. But like you said, the, um, the shot clock caught him out and he does it to everybody, you know. Oh, fluke, yeah. fluke. Oh. He wasn't set on that shot either. He was rushed. Didn't like it at all. Well, Tom Cousins is 5-2 up here, and I'm not exaggerating, I think it might be the worst I've seen him play in a, in a good long while. Well, I'll be honest with you, and you know I don't mix my words. <laughs> it's the worst I've ever seen him play. I mean, we both played bad when we played the, uh, the event down in Brentwood. We both missed all sorts. But in the, in the actual pro series, I don't think I've ever seen him play as bad as this. He's 5-2 up. <laughs> well, it will be 5-3 right now, but... It is 5-3, but it could easily be 5-3 the other way. I, I mean, you could argue it should be. The Jazz has had more chances in the match. He's certainly had more chances, and he's missed more chances, and that's the difference. That's another good break from Jazz. I think that will that'll almost stick in his craw a little bit, because he's done so much right, and yet... He's made silly errors in his patterns and his and his shot choices. It's almost cost himself the game. He's had the chances. He's broken beautifully. Yeah, he's certainly had the chances, and they've not been. A lot of them haven't been great chances. Let's let's be fair, but yeah, he's, he's not missed sitters. Like yeah, like you say, but a player at Jez's level would certainly expect to have taken some of them. Yeah, and again, I don't I don't understand why he's going for yellows. 
and he nearly missed that one. The yellow that's above the eight ball, which pocket does that go in? Because unless I'm mistaken, I don't think it goes in any pocket. It may go to right centre. But he's got to break the other one out also. Oh, I know, I'm just, I'm just answering your question. Yeah, I I'm, well, <laughs> I'm not sure about this. Well, does it, if it goes bottom left, it makes a little bit more sense. We've yeah. got to play the plan, cannon the red out, land on another yellow. This isn't easy. Oh, is it a plant? Has he had a roll? Is it a plant in the middle pocket? If it is, that is a major, major roll. But it's not. Yeah, I don't think so. He's playing the double. Yeah, and again, all because he went for yellows. That yellow is the one that's cost him, the one that I mentioned a couple of moments ago. and. There wasn't easy, and he, he has been unfortunate with some of his breaks because they haven't come out great. But Tom's going to take his time here. There's no rushing Tom here. <laughs> 15 second shot clock does its best to. He sort of turns around and snaps extension. And he's, I think he's playing clock a little bit here, Tom. He is. And I tell you what, that's not his greatest shot, you know. He's left just a chance here. He plays this and gets a cue ball behind. Oh, he's played it the wrong way. You play the cue ball in behind the yellow, not the eight ball in behind the yellow. And now he's completely dead in this frame. You can, Jazz Graham can't win this frame now. No. Not without a huge amount of luck. If this is Tom, he should be playing the red up the table and cannon the yellow to the side cushion. Like that. And that is game over. Yeah, five minutes left. Jazz could, Jazz could be here all night to win this frame. Well, he's got to smash them. It's no good playing that shot, because now Tom, if he really, really wanted, could take 15 seconds on each ball that he's going to play. I think you just play the red in the middle here, up to the wards the yellow, and kill the cue ball. Yeah, it's sort of going against Tom's instincts a little bit here. He's potting, even though I don't think he really wants to. But 15 seconds a shot, you have to, you have to play what you see. Yeah, definitely, he's... Um, he certainly missed the boat here as Jez. He needs to smash these at 100 mile an hour and hope something happens. He's got no That's choice. the only chance he's got yet. Well, he's just give Tom an opportunity here to win the, f the frame and the match, really. Both these reds go. Does the red that's next to the yellow, where the eight ball is, does that go? If it does, they're all there. Well playing safe yeah and I don't think you can you can blame him because I mean Tom's just basically giving Jez the rope in a sense you know he, it, Reds aren't particularly easy for Tom Cousins he's happy to fudge this away and let Jez make the mistake yeah and Je Jez should be smashing these at 100 mile an hour even though the chances are he's not going to get one and clear up because you need a lot of luck for that but he, he's running out of time it's no good him rolling balls and just giving Tom another shot well, the cue ball's in. Oh, wow. Oh, that was your chance. Here's your chance, should I say. I mean, that's amazing. No, play the yellow in the middle. Play the yellow in the middle opposite. Run through, cannon the yellow to the side cushion. Oh, Jez. Oh! That's that eight ball stayed up. Yeah, but it could never come out playing it like that. Nice shot. Can he screw back and get into this red? Off the side cushion. Needs something to happen. Oh, oh, it goes off the eight ball. Can he cut it? If he can cut it and screw into the red, he's plumb. I think he has to play the cut and screw into the red softly. It's perfect. Oh, that'll oh. do. We've got a match back on our hands. How? How on earth is this match still live? How on earth has Jez Graham won that frame? <laughs> it's all been happening, hasn't it? It's been an extraordinary match. 5-4, two and a half minutes left. Tom Cousins goes for his usual full power break. He actually catches them really nicely. For the first time in the match, he breaks dry. But look at the split. He's left Jez Graham. And I tell you what, it, you just knew it was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen just the way the match has gone. And Jez wants to get a move on here. Well, Jez could win the match. That's the key. Jez has time to level it, 
and send us to a six red shootout, but he can go and win it if he gets a move on. I don't like it. Look like he's in any kind of rush, to be honest. He's played that well. It's about a minute per clearance. That's pretty doable. He's played that very well, you know, there. Because as soon as he gets rid of these two balls at the top, everything's in the open. But he definitely needs to get a move on, because he isn't the quickest player in the world, isn't Jez? He likes to, you know, work everything out and work his pattern out. Just come between the gap. No. He's trying to go into the eight ball there, I think. Oh, what has he tried to do there? <laughs> You've just got to miss the eight ball and you plumb. Wow. This is... Uh, he could slide off this yellow, uh, this red and going off, you know, here. Well, he's played that good. So one minute 12 and ticking. I think for Jez Graham here, he's, he's just... For all eggs are in this frame. Take it to a six red and let the gods decide. Seems to be what he's thinking. Oh, where's he going? Where is he going? I tell you what, he's awkward on this, you know. He is as awkward as awkward could be. He's got to play the bottom red, I think. Or can he play the top one and push through? I think he can just push through. Wow, I did. Oh, what? Oh, I he's mean. completely all over the show in this clearance. He's still fighting. Well, one good shot, and it could be five apiece. Is there going to be a twist? Great shot. It's Great all going to come down to this eight ball for a six red shootout for Jez Graham and Tom Cousins. All credit to him for that shot. That wasn't easy. And we are going the distance. 14, 13, 12 seconds left on the match clock. Neither one of these players is breaking and running in that time. He's took out a great finish there at the end, under pressure. Oh, he's going to foul break, which is extra funny. <laughs> but why would you foul break? Just, just break him open, Jez. Just crack on. He's there. He's stalling us here. I tell you what, if he wins this match now, he's favourite for the tournament. <laughs> he's probably favourite anyway. But that's the sort of the sort of how it goes, isn't it? Well, that is very much not a foul break, and the clock will tick down, and we will have ourselves a six red shootout. Formalities will be concluded. Oh, what a bonkers game this has been. Yeah, there's a good crowd. I just hope the break well. You know, whoever wins, just hope the break well. Who's your favourite? <laughs> I think you have to pick Jez, but th this match, um, it all bets are off. Anything could happen here. It's just the way it's gone, isn't it? It's just mad. It's a lovely break. Well, it's a great At this break. point, it's, it's just keep yourself together. Just play solid. That's, he's all right, but kill the cue ball. They kill the cue ball every shot. Well, he can do that now. Ooh, yeah, he's okay. I said 23. It's going to be close. He'll take that. He'll take that. Oh, I'll tell that. you what. <laughs> how close is that? <laughs> 24 1 2, I can tell you, is the official time. I couldn't have got much closer. You were just out on your prediction. Oh, the break stuck. What did I say to you? Game over. I told you, didn't I? I said if the ref wrecks him bad, it, it can happen. That is game over. He's lost. I think Tom's conceded. Well, what an extraordinary ending to, in truth, what is such an extraordinary match. It, 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 it was constantly on the edge, constantly mad, and it's got a mad finish.